afternoon, everybody. And thank you all for being here under these challenging conditions today. Thank you. I told Anna you'd come. Uh, I want to thank you for making New Haven's arts and cultural community a priority, even in weather like this. The invitation you received to this event says it all. New Haven loves the arts. Oh, how wonderful. Look at this, this great gathering of folks here today to celebrate the arts and to celebrate the city of New Haven. I'll just tell you this, Mayor, so proud to co-host this with you, that, um, uh, I, that your ongoing commitment to the arts and what you do, and I would just say that uh, uh, the alternate title uh, for this event uh, uh, could be that you've got to have heart. So thank you. Very much. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, and Peter, to you, uh, uh, I just, yeah, I appreciate his wonderful introduction, but we know Peter as an exceptional scholar and a teacher. He's won awards for both of those efforts, but he's an accomplished musician. Yeah. Um, and I'm not just talking about the occasional stint. Um, as an impromptu conductor, the Yale Marching Band. <laughs> but he's been playing bluegrass for the last 40 years. So, and 25 years ago, he started to get that band. The professors of bluegrass. And you can catch their performances online. Uh, we honor today. Uh, you know, I, I, what my dad asked me, and I told this story earlier uh, with the uh, chairman. So my, my father asked me, you know, what I wanted to do when I grew up. I said to him, I wanted to be a dancer. And I didn't, I wanted to be a tap dancer. But he said to me, you should get yourself a more stable profession. <laughs> so I run for office every two years and take the chances. But as I said again earlier today, I'd give it all up if I could be on that stage just tap dancing away. It's the summer before junior year. 19-year-old me enters the living room and says, Mom, Dad, I have something to tell you. I want to major in English. <laughs> My parents sigh in unison as if something has shattered, their faces dropping as if they were following the descent of a vase, a ceramic container of their hopes and dreams, carefully watered and weeded for 20 hopeful years on the brink of blooming now, broken into beautiful, devastating pieces. What I should have said was, Mom, Dad, I want to turn dreams into fact via page, with words that sound like rhythms and songs that sound like stories, capture the rough, sweet grit of an early morning in an unfamiliar city, or meditate in verses on the warm buzz of a late night with best friends. See, I want to study soft science, because the world is vast, and chemistry and engineering, they are brimming with that vastness. I want to study the details, illuminate the gray areas, make extensive metaphors trying to encapsulate the complexity of the humanities, but I'm sorry you're holding your breath, waiting for me to walk a pre-planted path from college to career, but I'd rather live in the world of Audrey Lord and Wordsworth and Mondrian and Chimamanda, a world I can create as I go along. Thank you. Well, that was one of the better defenses of the humanities I've heard. <laughs> and I think I should probably just stop right there. <laughs> that was terrific. Thank you all for coming. Uh, what a wonderful day, notwithstanding the snow. I'm from Maine, so this reminds me of home. Uh, and uh, I'm really glad to be here. This is the first Valentine's celebration of the arts and humanities I've ever been to. But I think it now ought to become a national tradition. So Jane, we're going to take this back. for communities coming together and celebrating their work in these ways together because it's so obviously important that we do celebrate it in this way. Jane mentioned that we are about to begin formal celebrations of the 50th anniversary of the founding of the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Endowment for the Humanities. September 29th, 1965, President Johnson signed the legislation that created these two agencies in the midst of one of the most creative legislative periods, I think, in modern American history. You know the other great things that were happening then, but right at the center of this 
was the creation of these two wonderful agencies, which now for over 50 years have been contributing to communities like this one all over the country and building what I like to call the cultural capital of the United States. And we cannot realize the fullness of the promise of this country without these commitments and without applying these forms of understanding and knowledge to the things that we share in common and to the challenges that we have to overcome. So this is really a matter of fundamental importance to the country. And the work that you're doing and that we're doing is all together aiming to make a huge difference in the quality of life for the citizens, all the citizens. I'm joined today by Matt Harrison at the piano.